Hi, welcome back to my channel everyone. This video is part 2 of the Air Force Museum of New Zealand review. In the part 1 of the review, I've introduced the museum's main aircraft hall, and in this video, I'll show you the relatively new display hall, which is part of the museum's 6,500 square meters extension completed in 2012. This hall has been used for multiple purposes, including conference space and earthquake recovery related purposes. Now I'll give you a close look at the aircraft exhibited in this hall, so join in. So I'm already inside the Air Force Museum of New Zealand. If you'd like to know about some basic facts about this museum, again, please check part 1 shared on my channel. This helicopter is called the Westland Wasp and it's British and it used to operate from onboard combat ships. In New Zealand, there were seven aircraft in the fleet and the operational aircraft flew off the Royal Navy's former Leander-class frigates from 1966 to 1997. So these helicopters um, can actually carry two torpedoes to attack submarines. And that's the torpedo there at the bottom. And uh, that over there at the bottom is where you can mount the torpedoes. And this aircraft here is an Italian Air Mackey MB339CV, also known as Mackey. I hope I pronounced it right. Um, it's a military jet trainer developed during the 1970s. For New Zealand, this was the only Italian-made aircraft to fly with the Royal New Zealand Air Force. And it gave the pilots the introduction to fast jet flying. And this huge one over your head is called the Bristol Freighter which was used as a transport aircraft in a passenger airliner. Um, this particular one here on display carried out a variety of tasks, including flying passengers to the Chatham Islands, um, delivering aid in the Pacific region, and also making regular supply missions from their base in Singapore to South Vietnam between 1955 and 1977. And this pretty one here is the French aircraft called Blériot 11. It's known as the aircraft on which its creator, Louis Blériot, I hope I pronounced it all right, um, made the first successful flight across the English Channel in 1909, and that one is a replica called Britannia. And this one coming up has a unique long dorsal fin, and it's called the Haviland Vampire Trainer. It's a side-by-side -side British two-seat training aircraft. New Zealand purchased five of these T-11 Vampire trainers in 1955. Next to the Vampire trainer is called the Haviland Beaver. The Beaver was one of several short takeoff and landing aircraft designed in Canada after World War II. The Royal New Zealand Air Force bought Beaver as part of the Commonwealth's Trans-Antarctic Expedition. And that is a stone brought back from the Scott base. The aircraft was used for supplying food and fuel between Scott Base and the South Pole in Antarctica. The Avro Anson is a British two-engined uh, multi-role aircraft. In New Zealand, 23 Ansons were used for general reconnaissance and advanced navigational training until 1952. This one here on display was rebuilt at Wigram in the 80s from many different parts of Anson aircraft. And next to the Avro Anson is this cool one here called the Strike Master, also known as Blunty. The Strike Masters were used as a jet conversion training aircraft for pilots progressing through to the Air Force Skyhawks. And this yellow beautiful one is Tiger Moth. Um, this tiger moth is usually on display in the museum atrium, as you'll see in my part 1 of the museum review. However, it's been moved to this hall. Apparently, they're installing a new exhibit in the atrium. Um, tiger moth was used for basic flying training and was the principal initial pilot trainer during World War II. And this Cessna Skymaster is a military version of the Cessna 337 Super Skymaster, which has a twin engine built in a push-pull configuration. It was flown by a number of Royal New Zealand Air Force pilots seconded to the United States Air Force in South Vietnam. Oh, 
And this one here, I'm pretty sure I've seen this before in the movie Top Gun, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it looks really familiar. Um, a Fork Skyhawk had a top speed of 645 miles per hour and could haul nearly 10,000 pounds of bombs. And this last one I'm going to show you today in this video is the Sioux. And for whoever was enjoying their life in the 70s, I think the Sioux is well known in the MASH TV series, heavily featured in the opening credits. Um, it was the first helicopter to service with the Royal New Zealand Air Force, and it was used for light observation and liaison tasks for the Army. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I might do part 3 if people want to see more of what's happening inside the museum. I'm giving 3 stars for this place. The museum is open every day except for Christmas for free. There's plenty of parking, it's accessible. The cafe is a bit overpriced but quiet with plenty of seating. The museum shop is actually quite entertaining with lots of gift options. There's also um, different types of venues to hire with um, catering options and you can easily spend 2-3 to three hours here if you're an aviation fan and I also suggest you take a free behind the scenes tour um, for maximum visitor experience. If you like my video, please don't forget to subscribe. See you next time!